what um what 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 got you to want to go to school and to learn? I heard you say something about your mom, but this is not something I would ever pick up a book and say, yo, I want to learn about taxes. Like yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? How? So so it's funny, is that's a funny story. Uh so I started out, um, little background was like I started out uh went to a culinary high school in Buffalo. So I thought Remember that so? I wanted yeah, okay. yeah. Right. So I thought I wanted to be a chef. And I still cook today, which nice. is like something like you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's an outlet for you? Yeah, That's yeah. Dope. Yeah. That's dope. So um so I, I thought I wanted to be a chef and then uh I ended up looking. I remember when I was like in high school, Google how much do chefs make. And I used to always see the chefs working a lot. Yeah. So how much they made, I was like, nah, I'd rather own a business. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, so so yeah, so I just was like that ended up parlaying into like me going to a school in Buffalo. Um, Kanisha's College, you know, and I didn't know what I wanted to do in business yeah. because there's different avenues that you can enter Absolutely. into. Um, but I, what I did know is that I didn't know anybody in my family that owned a business. Mm. And I always say, um, you have to learn the rule somehow. You mm-hmm. got to know the rule. Like you have to play the game to change the game mm-hmm. on some real. Mm-hmm. So um, I just was like, if I don't know anybody that's in business, what's the best way to get into this space, you know, yeah. so that I can start to build generational wealth. Yeah. And um, that ended up coming down to uh, like me choosing accounting as a major because okay. I said, you know what, like if you have a doctor and I think we like kind of like mm-hmm. spoke about this, if mm-hmm. you have a doctor, they're evaluating how the body is. You yeah. have a lawyer, they're evaluating how um, the law is played. Yeah. Well, an accountant is evaluating how businesses are played. Yeah. You know, so I just was like, it was a shot in the dark, to be honest with you. Yeah. I chose accounting. Yeah. Um, and then I chose accounting and accounting information systems yeah. because I was young. I didn't know, you know, and I, yeah. but I know that um, we're moving in a digital age. So I said, I'm going to be forward progressive and take advantage of yeah. information systems as well. So I want to, I, I want that. So we did have that conversation. I'm glad you brought it up because I, I want to underscore that too while we're having this conversation, um, while we're on the podcast, because because I think that's a really good point that I don't think I heard anywhere else besides you. So let's talk about that a little bit. Mm-hmm. You're not going to go to a foot doctor for heart surgery. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. And if you do, it might yeah, be a problem, yeah. right? Um, and again, I, I think you're one of the only ones I ever heard say something like that as far as giving the example, using that as an example of how important, you know what I mean, tax law is. Just talk about that just, just a little more because what you said is you got lawyers who explain the law to you. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You, you got doctors who take care of healthcare. It is just as important for you as a person and your business and generational wealth building to have that same mindset around a good CPA. I, mm-hmm. I, I really like that. Just say just say a little more about that. Yeah. So one of one of my big thing one of my big things is that um, every single year, like if you go into a doctor. They're rating like, or if you want a multi a few times a year, they're rating how well you are necessarily, um, like your health is, mm-hmm. blood pressure, mm-hmm. and, they, and, they, and then they keep that track mm-hmm. record for year to year so mm-hmm. that they can see how well you are doing mm-hmm. with your health. What gets measured makes progress. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. What gets that's measured beautiful. makes progress. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you should be doing the same thing when it comes to like your financial statements. Mm-hmm. You know, um, a lot of people out here. They like, well, I'm making money. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, let me see your balance sheet. Yeah. And then when it comes down to hard times, then they might need like an investor or mm-hmm. some sort. They don't even got balance sheets. Mm-hmm. And and like and, and that's important because it's gonna show like your EBITDA number, mm-hmm. like earn it before income tax, mm-hmm. you know. So like, am I how do I know that if I'm giving you the money, mm-hmm. I'm gonna get it back? Mm-hmm. You know? So like a lot of people, yeah, you might be making money, mm-hmm. but can you utilize, you know? This information to make even more money, absolutely cutting certain costs. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying. Absolutely, to like make that number big and like it's. I always say, um, me personally, it's important to know your exit strategy mm. before you even start the business. No doubt, some businesses are designed to build and sell. Absolutely. Some businesses are designed to build and pass on to yep. like other family members. Yeah. But you should know before you even begin to start that LLC, S corporation, C corporation, do a little research, talk to your accountant. Yeah. What is the exit strategy yep. for this business? Yep. You know? Um so starting with starting with the end in the beginning. I I I I totally agree. I I we can talk for hours yeah. about yeah. that. But I'm not gonna take over the podcast <laughs> talking about that because yeah. I, I fundamentally agree that wrap up begins 
at the start. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You you, you got to have that vision to be able to to maintain to know if things don't go well, here is the plan mm -hmm. and here is how I get to it. Mm -hmm. And again, that mastermind group that can help you to say from a tax perspective, here is how we going to move if these certain things happen because yeah. the reality of it is once you go in with a design concept mm -hmm. that you want to have and want to take place, when other people start getting involved and then you have individuals who are helping you, you may have started out with a square, but you may come out with an octagon. And yeah, that doesn't yeah. mean that that oct octagon is bad. It just means that things shifted and they changed. And let's make sure my taxes are right. I don't go to tax jail. Let's make sure I have an exit strategy. Let's make sure that as I'm making more money, I'm keeping just as much money. So, so that's really dope. Um, before I put you on the hot seat with my my favorite question about expediting change, what you're doing, um, we talked about a whole lot. So, yeah. I want you to give me um, whatever you believe are three key points. Now, remember, my listeners, man, are anywhere from beginners who don't don't have a CPA and don't even know where to find a CPA to folks who are doing business and they locked in with a CPA. So just give me give me three key things that you think the listener should take away. Um, yeah, we talked about a lot of things. I would just say number one would be to make sure that you have a budget. Okay. Budgets are your friend. I know a lot of people don't like hearing that <laughs> word. No doubt. But they, they allow you to like plan um, how you're going to write off, like what your write-offs will be at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So if you get to, let's just say, um, the end of the year, December and December 31, you might have to buy an asset for depreciation perspective mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that you can lower that uh, taxable income amount. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like having a budget would allow you to know what exactly that money um, you might have at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Mm -hmm. Two, I would say um, make sure you tap into your network, okay. you know, to get those references to make sure that you are reaching out to the right people mm -hmm. and and um, and ask for and interview those like over those references when you are looking for an accountant mm -hmm. or a tax accountant um, and uh, three that writing off expenses is not a bad thing mm -hmm. when you're spending it on your business. Mm -hmm. That's dope. That's dope. So make sure you documented those three things, squad. Make sure you pull up the expediting change and you rewind and you write those down and then you go into them and you send me questions. So now we're going to move into the hot seat. The hot seat is you super smart. The hot seat is you went to school and you read some books that I'll ever, never ever read in life, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right? You know right, what I'm right. saying? But I fundamentally believe, as you know, a rising tide raises all ships, right? Mm. So what are you doing to expedite change? What are you doing to get the knowledge that you have whether it's community service, discounting your rates, whatever it is, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is for you to help for the positive progression of the culture. What are you doing for the culture? Yeah, so um, first, uh, outside of like doing like the whole accounting thing, mm -hmm. I ended up um, like starting like a production company. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I've noticed is that uh, a lot of the times is that a lot of people that look like us, mm -hmm. we don't necessarily like have the right financial people in those spaces. Mm. So it's hard to get trust, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, for people that look like us, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, I definitely uh, spent hours and hours in, to learn this information so that I can like drive down and like be able to give back to my people no doubt. and educate them on no like doubt. the different kind of tax advantages yep. um, through that. Uh, uh, in addition to that, um, I have like uh, starting like this new I guess concept for like fatherhood, food, and finance, in nice. which I'm like designing a community of fathers, mm -hmm. and we can like talk about like uh, like just giving back um, to like to create a structure that we can invest into our families, so that we, if we're no longer here, they can still receive like that's money fire, from the tax that's fire, Gener generational stuff. So yeah. say, say the name again into the camera, and how, how can they find and, and connect with that? Yeah, fatherhood, food, and finance. Um, it's on Instagram. You can hit it up, fatherhood underscore food underscore finance. Um, yeah, so. My guy, I appreciate you. This has been fire. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm a 100% give my guy credit and edify him and give him his flowers while he's here. I know I done called this man on a multitude of occasions. We done been at football games, whether at my house or at the football game and asked him a question, a stock question. Um, and he just answered, and I've never got a bill. Only time I got a bill is when he actually came out and had to do work, you know what I mean? The video work. And I, at that time, I expected a bill, you know what I'm saying? So when we talk about positive progression, 
Um, it's dope. So yeah. um, he is absolutely doing his thing. This is what the Expediting Change podcast is about. Putting people who have a specific skill set to come talk to you to give you information. There are lots of pathways to ultimately building our generational wealth. And Shamari's way is never the Shamari show is it, right? There are many different brilliant people out there. So I'm going to bring these brilliant people with a diversity of thought. But then it's your turn to do your own research to make sure you have the information and, to, and the knowledge to grow and build. Because again, I say it all the time, a rising tide raises all ships. It's just not Shamari and his ship and his tide, but it's the community. It's for the positive progression of the culture. So Keon gave us a whole lot in this segment that you need to take, write down, and then go ask Uncle Google. One of the biggest things I think he said was, Start with your own circle. Start with somebody that you know to make sure that you can find a good CPA that could take care of your financial health. How can we grow as people, as a community, when we talk about building generational wealth, when we're not necessarily the experts of what finance looks like from a tax and business perspective. But the one thing that we do know 100% is that this country was designed around giving it up for those who own corporations, right? Make sure if you out there doing business, everything is tight and growing your mastermind group and building generational wealth equals you making sure that you have just like the foot doctor and the heart surgeon and the attorney to have a solid CPA on your team. This is Expediting Change. I appreciate y'all.